Hello, welcome to Lil's Vintage World. This video I'm going to talk about four classic crime books from the 20th century and review them for you. Let's get straight into it. I'm going to do them in order of least favourite to favourite of these books. So first of all, I have In the Teeth of Evidence by Dorothy L. Sayers. Now, usually I really like Sayers. If you've watched many of these videos before, you will know that. I adore Strong Poison and Gordy Knight. I think so many of her books are fab. Sad to say, I didn't love this one. So this book is a collection of short stories and you might be like, oh, I know why you didn't like it because you're not a short story person. Now, I have to say, most of the time, no, I'm not a short story person at all. I don't really do short stories. I find them a bit boring and I find them awkward lengths. Like some short stories I'm like, oh, I wish that went on a bit longer. And some I'm like, way too long. But I do like classic crime short stories of characters that I know and love very well. So I do really enjoy Agatha Christie Poirot short stories, Agatha Christie Miss Marple short stories and the Tommy and Tuppence ones. I'm not a big fan of standalone ones to be honest and so I thought oh I really like the Lord Peter ones so I thought I would give her short stories a go. This book In the Teeth of Evidence has um, two short stories which are um, Lord Peter Winsley which are the first two so the one called In the Teeth of Evidence and the second one absolutely elsewhere. They are both um, Lord Peter Winsley and then there's about five which were the Montague Egg short stories and then the rest were kind of like standalones. Now for me I did really enjoy the Lord Peter ones. I'd give them four star. They were really fun. They're really great. Really enjoyed them. Classic Lord Peter. The Montague Egg ones I thought were good but not great. I mean, a bit meh. And the standalones, I didn't care for them at all really. So I have made an executive decision that what I'm going to do is there is a bind up in this edition that you can get which is just the Lord Peter short stories. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to buy myself the Lord Peter short stories and forget the rest of them because they're just not for me. I just love Lord Peter, I really, really do. So I'm going to pick up the Lord Peter ones and move aside the standalones and everything. Sad to say, but I think sometimes you've just gotta, you've just gotta do it, haven't you? Read what you love. Then the next one um, that I liked a bit better than this one, I should say, is Death in the Cup by Murray Dalton. This is my first Murray Dalton. I haven't read any before, but when I was looking at the Dean Street Press, they republish a lot of forgotten classics. When I was looking in their catalogue, uh, Murray Dalton was a name that came up and it sounded really good, so I picked this up. This is about this nasty, horrible woman who's kind of like head of the family. Um, she is the eldest sister and the money and everything like that, is, it's in her control and she gets um, murdered via poison in her cup of milk and suspicion instantly falls on her brother. But did he do it? Dun, dun, dun. This book was a really quick, really easy read. It's less than 200 pages and the font is really quite large. I liked it. I didn't love it, but I thought it was good and I think I will have a look and possibly pick up some more Murray Dalton in the future. But yeah, I don't think this is her best. So I think I'm gonna look and pick, do a bit more research in her and pick up, you know, one of her more regarded works, so to speak. But I did like it more than this one. Which isn't hard really, to be honest. Don't do short stories. Then I picked up a Patricia Wentworth. This is the Braiding Collection, which is a Miss Silver novel from 1952. And this is about a man called Lewis Braiding. He comes to Miss Silver for help and she doesn't like him. And so she kind of refuses to help him because she just thinks that he's a bit arrogant and up himself. And yeah, there's just something about him that she just doesn't like and so she says no I won't help you. Um, he's quite a controlling man and she doesn't like how he does that um, and how he refuses to help people and things like that so she refuses to help him essentially and then 
he ends up getting murdered. <laughs> and the the day um, that it's in the paper, Miss Silver's opening her letters and there's a letter from him to say, would you possibly reconsider and help me? And then um, she's obviously like, no, don't like you still. And then she opens the newspaper and he's like, oh, the announcement that he's dead. So then she does get involved and she goes to assist uh, Inspector Marsh, who's in this book. We usually we have like Detective Inspector Lamb, but we have Inspector Marsh, who's in quite a few stories as well. Um, I loved this book. It was so good, amazing, well plotted, well paced. Loved the characters, so many likeable and unlikable characters. I did love it. I also love the little love story that's going through as well. And I like how we have this really horrible person that gets murdered. It's like, meh, <laughs> in a way. And I quite like that. I love Miss Silver. I love how she's working things out. And I worked out who it was really, really early on, like really early on. And that doesn't take anything away from the story. It was just wonderful. And all I can say is go and read it because I read it in two days and I think it's fab. So I know I say that so much about Patricia Wentworth, but they are, they're great. And then finally, I have completely cheated with this actually, because this isn't a classic crime book, but it's about a classic crime book. And it's this, this is Miss Marple, The Life and Times of Miss J Marple by Anne Hart. So this essentially is a biography of Agatha Christie's character, Miss Marple. Now I have read all of the 20 short stories and all 12 full length novels of Miss Marple many, many, many times. <laughs> and so nothing in here was new to me, but the way that it was written was fascinating. This book was originally published in the 1980s, but it has just been reissued over the years several times to put things up to date, really. So in this, we talk about St. Mary Mead. There's even a little map of St. Mary Mead at the beginning as well. Here it is. We talk about uh, a lot of the reoccurring characters like Dr. Haydock and Dolly Bantry. We talk about uh, Miss Marple's uh, through the decade and uh, cases that she has through the decade. We talk about her birth, her family, her education. We talk about her love life, her relationships, her friendships, everything. Everything that you can think of to do with Miss Marple, we discuss it in this book. And, Oh, it was wonderful. It was wonderful putting all these pieces together because, because I've read all of Miss Marple, I, I, I very much felt like I knew her, but then I read this and kind of felt like, hmm, I see a different side to her and it was really, really nice and it, it made me feel a lot closer to her than I did before. And I loved it. it was so, so good. There is a Poirot one of this as well. So, is exciting and I do own that and I will be reading that very very soon but I wanted to just gush about this book. If you're a fan of Agatha Christie's Miss Marple I highly highly recommend you pick it. Five star, it is brilliant, it is amazing and it just makes me want to reread all of the Miss Marple books all over again which I might just do because they're fantastic. Right so there we have it, those are the classic crime books that I have read recently um, from least favourite up here to favourites, these two both five star amazing reads. Let me know what classic crime books you have been reading recently and I shall see you soon for the next video. Take care for now, bye!